Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, <sighs> nice, uh, beautiful day for me. About 42. So this is like free air conditioning. Hallelujah. It feels great. Um, <sighs> nice clean air. Thank God for, for, for that. And uh, a little overcast, but no wind, nice and calm. Man, I, I sure feel a lot better, and uh, heart stuff's really, I think it's going to work. So I'm still a little bruised up. I don't want to show everybody this, but a little bruised and still healing up. I don't think I've pulled any of the wires out of my heart yet. Uh, it's still, It's still reading my pulse. And uh, app still transmitting, <laughs> transmitting data. So uh, man, modern technology, right? So um, thank God that uh, man, I'm doing way better than I was. Um, today is Mother's Day, and I always get choked up on Mother's Day. And uh, I lost my mother back in. Uh, November of 1998, right before Thanksgiving, a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving. And my mom had breast cancer and she didn't tell anybody. She didn't want anybody to feel sorry for her or worry about her. I'm really, I was really mad at her for not sharing what was wrong with her. And, um, but she had been in the hospital that summer. I didn't even know she was in the hospital until I <coughs> tracked her down. I was like, hey, we're, she, I mean, she didn't even want to tell me she was in the hospital. And, uh, but I went and saw her in the hospital that summer and and she was like, oh, this is no big deal. I just have a little pneumonia and I'll be out in a couple of days. It's not a big deal. And, um, but she told me that she had an angel visit her in the hospital. And she told me about this. And I mean, for my mom to say that was really incredible because my mom was a real... She wasn't uh, an exaggerating type person. She she was, I mean, she just told the truth and didn't didn't exaggerate or embellish stuff or you know try to make it sound better than it was. My mom was really really told the you know just told it like it was and the truth, right? And uh, but she told me she had an angel visit her in the hospital and that. Um, he had told her that everything was going to be all right. And she, she really had peace. I mean, I could just tell. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, this is just, you know, she got cold and got sick, got a little pneumonia. And I said, yeah, you're going to be fine. So um, she, she looked really, really good. I mean, she looked great. And I lived about 35, 40 miles away, so I didn't see her all the time. But I saw her a few times after she got out of the hospital and I was, I lived over in Dallas. She lived in Fort Worth and, um, and everybody from Dallas, Fort Worth realizes, you know, how far apart that is and, you know, the traffic and the drive and all that stuff that's involved with it. Um, so I'd seen her a bunch and she looked great. She'd lost some weight and, um, I mean, she looked really good, um, I had seen my mom the Friday before uh, she passed away. I saw her Friday. She passed away Sunday. And I was over in Fort Worth and and caught her at her house. And, um, and she was dressed, had her makeup on and done her hair. And she was going to, going to Target, <laughs> you know, going to the grocery store, you know, 
And I only saw her for like five minutes. And and I was coming back from someplace else and I just swung by. She was she wasn't working that day and she was at home and so but man, she looked fantastic. I mean she looked just beautiful. She looked healthy, she looked you can never tell anything was wrong with her, right? And um so I got to see her for about five minutes and then that Sunday morning I got a call from my brother, my younger brother. Um he told me mom died. And I said, What? And he's like, Mom mom died last night. And I'm like, You've got to be kidding me. And so I raced across Dallas Fort Worth. I ended up in my truck and and uh so yeah, she she died in her sleep, in her recliner, and uh she had the T V on and Back then it was QVC, right? And uh, instead of Amazon and eBay, she was watching QVC. But uh, she passed away. And um, so um, I asked her doctor, I go, what the heck happened to my mother? And he had told me, he was just looking at me like, didn't you know? And I'm like, didn't I know what? And he said, yeah, she had breast cancer. And it was too far gone. And we, we, you know, by the time we caught it, there was really nothing we could do about it. And so she up and died on us and it didn't tell us what was wrong with her. And I was pretty mad about that. But um, her best friend had did the exact same thing to her a year before that. And her her best friend's name was Becky, and Becky got breast cancer, didn't tell anybody, and up and died on everybody without anybody knowing what was going on. So she, and my mom was upset that she had done that because she wanted to, you know, and she wanted to hang out with her. She wanted to know, and she wanted to, you know, I would have given anything to know. I would have sure made her last time on earth, you know, pretty special as far as to spend some time with her and doing things and you know all that stuff but so mother's day for me um and michelle and i had just been married like a year and um um so that was 24 years ago um well now it's 25 because it was last fall but um so my mom's been gone for 25 years and my mom will always be with me. And, you know, there's tons of Bible verses about, you know, you know, women raising your kids and nurturing your kids and leading them to God and, you know, growing them up in the ways that they should go and, and that they'll never depart from those ways, you know later in their lives and and so there's all these so it's going through some scripture this morning trying to trying to pick out some good mother's day verses and um you know um and there's a lot of these things that my mom did that um you know that she was obedient in the lord and trying to raise me and my, I have two younger half brothers. And, uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of things I still learned from my mom and a lot of things that I've, over all these years, I, I look back on her life and see how hardworking she was and how honest she was and how, uh, pure she was and, and how modest she was and, and how, man, she, she was a worker bee and how dedicated she was to her job. And, and you know, just every Saturday morning, my mom spent all day long scrubbing the house, top to bottom. I mean, our house on Saturday morning smelled like Comet and Pine Saw and bleach and scrubbing the bathrooms. I mean, scrubbing the kitchen floor, scrubbing the, I mean, my mom, 
she spent all day Saturday cleaning our house, vacuuming, I mean, everything. I mean, she just, she was relentless when it came to that. And she grew up pretty modest and she had big family, 10 kids in her family and, and, uh, and, um, so she, she really did her best to make a very nice home for me and my brothers growing up. And, uh, so, um, Mother's Day, happy, happy Mother's Day to my mom. Can't wait. To see her again. So anyway, today's prayer Sunday. I don't want to go too long on this. Um, thank God I'm back in the do. Man, I really love talking about God and so grateful that I can look at my life through the lens of the Bible and I'm not looking at my life or this world any longer from the lens of how the world sees everybody and everything is so nasty and corrupt and polluted and and uh, so I'm very fortunate here to uh, be where I'm at and to have this protection and this filter from you know how how terrible and corrupt this world has become and so I'm praying that for everybody that, and, um, you know, that they can really, truly live every single day and, and the lifestyle and the peace and the security of the Lord, the way it's, the Bible is truly, literally written and that, um, you know, we're insulated from what's going on down here and we can really, truly walk with the Lord every day and, um, not quite the garden of Eden, but, um, it's not quite heaven yet, but, um, you know, to have that peace and security and that, that protection from the world and, and that innocence of, um, I refuse to be corrupted by this place. I'm just, I'm, I moved up here to shake all of that worldly junk off of me and to get it out of my house and to get it off my family. And, and man, that's my mission. I want to live my life completely and totally the best I can for the Lord. And, uh, as simply and as humbly and as grateful with as much with, with, with as much gratefulness as I possibly can have. And, uh, so, um, you know, that's why I keep sharing or saying, you know, I want to share with everybody else what God shared with me and that, and that, that peace that surpasses all understanding. And so, um, let's keep the short prayer Sunday. Um, had a lot of prayers in the last video and man, I had a lot of people saying, brother, I'm, I'm so glad that you're okay and that you're, you're back and what you're saying is making a huge difference in my life and giving me some rest and some peace and some comfort. And man, if I could just, I'm praying that God just give everybody, um, that peace and that, that comfort and that security and knowing that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, you are a very loved child of God and, and I'm praying against everything I can pray against for everybody that's posting comments and what they're dealing with and, and asking the Lord to truly relieve them and, and show his mercy and grace and compassion on them and do for them what they can't do for themselves and to, to really let the Holy Spirit be upon them and, and to uh, give them rest right now and security as we wait for, for Jesus to come and get us, um, I don't know, like I was saying yesterday, I don't know how long this is going to go. I'm not even going to try and guess, 
taking it one day at a time like God instructs us to do and being anxious for nothing. And, and so, um, but today, everybody, please post your prayer request. I feel like it's, I can't do much, but I can spend my time going through all the comments and praying. And, and so, um, um, I'm managing my time to where I spend, that's, that's, that's the one thing I can do. It doesn't cost me any money. Um, it's not physically taxing at all on me. I can, I can read and I can pray. And, and so that's, if that's how I'm serving God, that's how I feel like I'm serving God. Um, and, and so, and I'm, I'm really, man, just, you know, God knows every one of your circumstances and, and all the details and all the stuff. And I, I'm just praying that, that the Lord would just really let his face shine upon you guys. And, uh, that, that he would just really start, like we were talking about, you know, when Noah's family got, when God closed the door and sealed them up in that ark. And I mean, they were in there when it started raining and, and they were, you know, listening to that and they knew the flood was rising and rising and rising, but they, they knew that they were safe on board. And so that's my, I want everybody to be safe on board and it goes back to the pilot stuff, right? I want it. Anybody that ever got an airplane with me, I always wanted them to be safe on board. And so I feel like that's my, my mission now is to try and do what I can to make everybody feel like you're, you're safe on board. And, and I'm praying that the, that the Lord would do that for you as well to give you rest and shelter and, and peace and security. Know that you're safe on board and you just sit back and relax. This is like a big corporate jet with big leather seats and, <laughs> you just sit back and you're safe on board and you're in first class. When you belong to Jesus, man, you're sitting in first class. Okay. And, and so I'm sitting in first class, which is great. And I really am grateful and appreciative to the Lord for that. So um, I want everybody else to have that gift of knowing that you're sitting in first class and this, this flight's getting ready to go. And, um, so, um, post your prayer request today and, uh, God bless all the moms and you dads and you fathers, you husbands out there. I'm telling you, you need to love your wives like Jesus loves the church, man. And you really need to ask the Lord for you to get your head around that. If you're being a piece of crap, husband, I, I, I'm telling you, man, it's not going to bode well for you at all. If you're being a piece of dirtbag husband, you need to pull your head out of your rear end because you are messing with Jesus's church. I mean, you know, he has a lot of respect for these women. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read Ephesians 5, 25 through 29. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. So... Um, praying that all you men out there get this 
Holy Spirit really come upon you and convict you. That he opened your eyes to see what this really means. To love your wife like he loves the church. And wives, you need to dig in there and see what God says for you to be doing too. If you're not quite there and you're not being a godly wife, then you know what I mean? So anyway, we all need to step it up. There's a whole book here that we'll never in our whole lifetime ever be able to get through all of it and understand all of it. But um, I'd be as thirsty as I can right now to know as much as I could possibly know about this, about what this Bible says and how we should be treating one another and how we should be living. And I, I have this unquenchable thirst right now to try to take my life to the next level and to try to be as much of a Christ-like man here as I can possibly be right now. And so I'm really hoping and praying that that's, that's everyone else's goal and that uh, they are really just turning their own selfish human BS off and, and letting the Lord be who he is through you and, and that you're, you're getting it. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. There's no greater blessing than to get to the point where you don't want to be you anymore. You just want Christ to be who he is through you. And so God bless everybody today and please post your, your prayer requests and, um, um, have a great rest of the Sunday and we will talk to you guys later.